this is it. And this is it for the hay. This is third cutting baling hay. And this is the last of all of the hay videos. Well, there'll still be some other stuff, but hay making, this is it. It is done after this. Then we'll be in on hay season 2022 coming up the end of May. It's not that far away. In the meantime, we have some really cool hay equipment that I can almost guarantee you guys have never seen before. Definitely let me know your thoughts down below if you've seen this equipment before. So without further ado, let's go check it out and see if we actually manage to get all of this done before the rain hits or is the rain seriously going to wreak havoc on all of our plans? You just have to watch and find out. Let's go. All right, so we are racing rain. Surprisingly, not surprisingly. We were not supposed to see it rain until Saturday, maybe afternoon. It just jumped up to tonight. Guaranteed chance. So, I mean, it could be a little bit of rain. It could be a lot of bit of rain. had to jump out of the tractor a couple of times to fix a few bales that just didn't come off the baler quite straight and um so he's pretty much running right behind me at the moment keeping up with me pretty good so i decided to bail up this bad field um it's just a really crappy field not all of it but a good chunk of it's pretty crappy so um so we're just getting this knocked out and out of the way while we wait for them to arrive it's just getting late in the day. You can see Eric is right behind me, just made his first stack. We got a neighbor girl down there getting some hay. Eric's right behind me, keeping up. The hay demoing company had a few more delays, and they wouldn't be arriving until almost 4 o'clock. In the meantime, we managed to get all of the scrappy field baled, stacked, and put away in the barn, and then reset up, making a few more bales, while they arrived and got their equipment ready to use. All right, this is the Parish AgriTurf Hay Accumulation System. Um, right here we have the ground accumulator that uh, is able to be pulled behind anything with a hitch, whether it's a tractor, a side-by-side, -side, a quad, or a, tra or a car. Um, the unique side hitch allows you to attach it to nearly anything with wheels and pull it along. Shoot, you could probably attach it to a horse if you really wanted. The nice thing I liked about this is that it has a very wide mouth at the front. On some of the hay accumulation systems you might be familiar with that um, collect bales on the ground, they tend to have a more narrow front, which can be a little tricky to get bales into uh, as you're driving along. But this one has a nice wide mouth that tapers and it really gives you a lot of leeway in case you don't quite get it lined up straight on. Now with this type of hay accumulation system, um, one of the concerns is that the bales will curl up as they're pulled along the field. Uh, the other problem is sometimes they have a little bit too much drag, and that's why the variety of grass plays a very important role in the functionality of this system. And that's why they wanted to come out and do the demonstration and see exactly how it operated on orchard grass, tough grass, and alfalfa, because those were crops that they did not have in the south and they could not visually test it on.
All right, so then finally we attach the hay accumulation system to the back of the baler. Um, it attaches right off the back of the hay chute on your baler and it plops right on in. Uh, the first thing I noticed is that obviously it makes for a very long train. Oop, that one just went flying. It's a bit like running a bale cart behind your baler. You have a long, large system. You really have to watch your tail end. You don't want to swing it too tight. Um, and when you do have a corner, you want to make sure that you're not spitting a bale out as you turn it because it may or may not fall into the chute. The other thing I noticed is uh, on the rear occasion, the bale will bounce around inside the chute and then flip over onto its side, where of course it just will not come out correctly. And it really kind of throws the whole system off when it does that. While I was making bale stacks, Eric went ahead and attached their version of the grapple system onto the front of the TYM tractor and began collecting the small stacks of 10 bales. Their grapple system was very similar to most others on the market, including the Max Later, and as was such, it didn't take Eric long to get the hang of it and uh, come up to the stack of bales. Uh, grapple it in and then restack it on the hay wagon. Uh, pretty straightforward.
So overall, I don't see any big issues. It's just another um, another system to get used to. It definitely is working on the orchard grass. We're gonna test it on the Teff next and then take it over to the alfalfa. All right, so we have a smaller field here. I'm just planning my attack. I gotta hit it just right. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna line this up, but I gotta make sure it's straight first. All right, so I gotta skip all that. I'm just gonna grab this end right over here. And just like a bale cart, I'm gonna whip it in tight. And then swing it out. And that should level it out. All right, so this is the first test run on tap. Uh, the windows aren't super huge. Uh, just because it was having a major tendency to prey on my hay rake. Well, so this is going to be interesting. I know my baler is not fond of tough. We'll see how it does. We'll know pretty quick. I really wanted to make sure this was straight before taking off. Probably just let it eat. We got the first two bales are orchard grass in the back. Orchard grass. Stick. Oh, we got the first tough bale. Alright, I can't drive straight and hold a bone at the same time. So we're gonna revisit this as soon as we uh, get a load that's gonna come off. But so far, it's it's skating pretty good. It's not curling at all yet. So, so I've been I've been dragging these things along. Ooh, ah! <laughs> I've been dragging them along back there, and they are golden. They are not curling. They are not doing anything crazy. The hardest thing is just setting up your rows so that you hit it straight on, just like with the bail carts. But you also cannot run over an existing row because it will clog up the inside. So that's probably the only thing that's different about this system versus other systems. It wasn't a problem on the orchard grass field. We didn't do the whole field. We just did half of it. But this one, it is a little bit more of a problem because it's so narrow. So hopefully I will get another batch of these guys out. So I'm coming up to another area, another switchback, and last one. Oh, there goes another road. You see it? There it is. Yay! So excited. It's like magic. Let me show you. There he goes. It just chucks it right in there. back right here. See how it's a real tight area. Um, and a lot of hay coming in right here. So we're just going to grab this on an angle like so. Okay. See that? Let me turn it off so it's not going to spit any more bales out. And then we're going to turn so this thing can turn really well. You just don't want a bale coming out while you're turning. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna collect this area right here, but we'll get to that. Right now we're just setting ourselves back up to come up to this small little line right here. And you'd be happy to know that I have drug it through the weeds, like full of hay bales, through all of those weeds back there and didn't have any issue. I don't recommend doing a lot of that, but sometimes you just don't have room to turn, and it did just fine. So, I mean, as far as bales flipping and turning, totally exceeded my expectations on that. Um, you definitely, definitely need to set your field up 
with their rank properly first. And I didn't know about all these different um, tricks with it, so I didn't know about ranking my field a little bit better. All right, so that went great. That really went great. A lot better than I was expecting, considering the field. Eric, won't buy on the grapple later. The turfle grapple. Oh, look at we've got two. Oops. Two sacks. Yeah, we ended up with 20. A little less than a, wow, no, 30. We ended up with about 30 bales. Yeah, nice. You see that three sacks of the yellow bales? That's 30. It hasn't rained yet. We have the neighbor's field still to do. Only the big, big, big farmers use the, uh, the coon system out here. Very rarely do you see a coon system in Michigan. You see a lot of bale carts and things like that. Sometimes you might see an accumul grapple. Oh my gosh, there's my dog in the way. But yeah. So there's there's nothing for small farmers. Oh gosh, I'm dragging this up a hill. Finally, it was time to hit the neighbor's alfalfa field. The time was roughly pushing 8 o'clock, and not only did we have the rain to race, we also had the dew to race. Now, I've never bailed alfalfa. I'm not familiar with it. I don't know anything about it. And uh, because we weren't exactly sure when they were going to be coming up, uh, the neighbor raked the field the best he could. Um, I should have gone through with my V-rake and collected it all into large rows that would have made it a lot easier but um, like I said uh, we weren't quite sure what to expect uh, the hay company wasn't able to bring the hay rake that they wanted to bring up so we were kind of left to uh, bail it the best we could so the parish hay company decided not to put the accumulator on the back of the baler this time uh, they pulled it off and they decided to collect this separately because it was a little bit smaller field and uh, they figured it would just make it a little bit easier to maneuver. It definitely took a long time with so many tiny rows to try to pick up Oh, I do not miss my bar rake one bit, let me tell you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this on a time lapse so you guys can go ahead and see all the work that went into bailing up this field. But I'm going to tell you, by the time we finished, it had already begun raining. And the bales were getting heavy and they were getting wet. Now, what you don't see is that I still have one more field yet to do on the front of our property that field gets soaked overnight. Out of all the grasses we bailed today, 
the alfalfa definitely gave us the most issue. Now it's hard to say if it's because it wasn't quite dry enough before we baled it, if it was because of the dew, because of the start of the rain, or because it's just not going to work in this hay crop. But you can see on that group right in front of us that it started to curl up a little bit. And a couple of the bales actually did um, the basketball up and had to be pulled out and cut back open. But you can see that it, it, they just weren't quite staying flat in the accumulation system. Okay, so we have one last field to do. This is our front field right here. Uh, it's a little bit moister than I would like. Um, I went through and raked it, let it sit for about an hour, and so now we're gonna go through and bale it. One of the things when you have a new baling system, regardless of what it is, is you have to set up the field accordingly. So this is a longer running system, so you have to plan your field turnarounds very carefully. So the way I raked it is that I'll be able to start down there and pull it all the way down, and then I've got space to turn around down here. And uh, so that's why most of this is extending out beyond the border. Down there, there's a lot wider gap between where the row starts and where I can't turn around anymore. So hopefully, <laughs> I'll be able to pull this off. All right, so, um, I'd actually hoped that Eric would be using their uh, their grapple accumulator version that they run, but he wanted to do another test with a pole behind just to see how well it worked. So that's what we're gonna do. Normally I would not want to use it on a field this small, but like I said, Eric wanted to do one final test run on this on the system, so we're gonna give it a whirl. So we have our last field that we're bailing here. Um, there are a couple of things that we definitely noticed on this field compared to the other ones. Now the first four bales coming out of the baler, these are actually going to be alfalfa. Um, the bales that we pulled off from the neighbor's field were still in the baler overnight. Uh, we were too exhausted to pull them out and honestly it, we were bailing the next day so it didn't make a difference. Uh, these bales were exceptionally heavy. Uh, we're looking at about 80 pounds. Um, yeah, so you can actually see how they behave inside the accumulator. They're a lot more clunky. Um, they don't slide through as nicely as the other bales. You can see it just, it kind of bounces around a little bit. And part of that is also because it is still slightly damp. Like I said, it had rained overnight and um, these bales were definitely decently wet when we bailed them. Um, they were towards the end of the bailing session the night before and it definitely plays a role in how they behave on the field All right, so right here you're gonna see there's a little blob of hay on the ground um, The hay bale does catch it But it's interesting to see that it doesn't seem to affect the bales in the chamber at all um, The hay is light enough that it's actually getting kind of dispersed across the field instead of clogging up the system but um, with this system, you definitely don't want to drag it through your windrows because A, it's going to mess your window up, and B, it, it's not going to play well with all the bales inside the chamber as a general rule. And there's another alfalfa bale going through. And you can see it just it does not want to turn. It's just catching on everything. Uh, the first four bales are alfalfa, and then after that, we will have the hay starting to come out. All right, so here's our first grass hay bale off this field. Uh, it, oh, it actually looks like it gets stuck in there. Interesting. It comes off and then it just kind of plants itself. Oh, there it goes. That's the first time I've seen that happen and I didn't notice it until just watching this video. Um, it's hard to say if it's how it came out or if it's because the bale is slightly damp. Maybe it's a little bit of both. 
um, and it did go into the chamber straight, so that's that's not the issue. Oh, that one came off the same way. That one's getting stuck on there too. Okay, there it goes. They do seem to be sliding better than the alfalfa bales, but I think because they are a little bit more damp, the dampness is causing it to catch on one of those guards. things considered, it seemed to work pretty well on this very tiny one and a half acre field. Um, there is no way I would ever consider using the bale carts on this field. It, I just wouldn't be able to fit them. Uh, this is just a little bit more narrow, definitely not as tall, and I'm able to sort of pull it off despite all of the obstacles. Well, I was almost <laughs> able to pull it off despite all the obstacles. And uh, then I realized I, I came in too close to one of the posts in the field and I knew that it was going to take out something, either the post or the tire. And unfortunately with this system, you can't back up with it. Um, so that is by far the biggest downfall of this system is if you get yourself in a pickle you're in a major pickle because you can't back up to correct yourself. And that's one advantage of um, the hay carts and most other hay accumulation systems is that you can in fact back up without causing any damage to anything. <sighs> Fortunately, the posts weren't cemented in and uh, they were able to pull them out and free me <laughs> so that I could continue on my merry way. Alright, so I was expecting about 30 bales, and that's pretty much what I got. So, that's not our actual total. We didn't get 567, but we probably got just over 500 total bales. I think the neighbor had about 60 bales over this field, so 507, roughly. And I think I only had to rebale two, which is actually pretty good, considering. Man, what a ride. This, seriously, I think I was shaking the entire time. <laughs> Ooh, so what were your thoughts on the equipment? What did you guys think about it? Uh, put your comments down below. I'm very curious to know. And if you guys think that there's another company that we should do a demonstration with, let me know in the comments down below and I will check them out because we are still looking for some new hay accumulation and collecting equipment for hay season 2022. We don't have much time, so you better let me know down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. From here on out, we're going to be catching up on all of our fall videos and all of our winter videos, and then we'll probably be coming right up close to hay season 2022. And if there's anything you guys would like to see on the farm that I haven't really covered, be sure to let me know, and I will do my best to have that included. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Whew. And as always, guys, love you guys. Take care and see you next time. Bye.